Right, um, we're back, so we're going to sort of like dig the holes. The rock concrete's coming at half past two, I believe, although no doubt it'll turn up at 12 o'clock, so that's what normally happens. Um, so you, let's, let's draw you a picture first. So it's still there, so you're not looking at the house. Um, right, if that's the garden fence running down, and that's the back fence as well. So there's the concrete pad. We have now taken off that and that off the concrete pad so that we're not having to dig through the pad at all points. So what we're left with now is this pad here. Um, John's pulled this line, the first line, this will be the, the fence side. If Jen just has a look down that fence side, we've not gone parallel off the fence, but if you look at the fence, you can see the kick in it, put right to the top there, can you just see? Yeah, so um, we, we tend to try and find something we can square off so that it looks square towards the house. Um, but in this instance, the fence isn't gonna happen because it's all over the place. So we're gonna use the pad itself. So what we've done, we've come 50 mil off that because, uh, where's the rod? What we want is this rod to sit down there in that line there. So it's just offset off there. Um, so what we'll do now, I'll just go back to this drawing now. Um, so we've pulled that line there like that. I'll show you about the lines and pins in a minute. Um, we've obviously took the concrete off there. We've measured 200 off that pad there. And we've also put a pin there, so they're the pins. So what John will do now, he'll pull a line along there like that, um, and he'll use his foldable square. Um, how much is that, John? About 25. About, I thought that, about 25 quid. That will square the building. If you haven't got a square, um, and you're gonna build one of these, I'd imagine you've got your 100 mil insulation somewhere already. So you could just put down a piece of 100 mil insulation and use the square off there. But what he'll do, he'll create that square corner there. And we've distanced that at 200 mil. So this line here falls approximately there. So we're not having to dig through that concrete either. So when he's done that one, he'll put another line there. He'll ping a line like that. Again, he'll put the square on there and make that square. And then we'll measure 3.1 that way. Of course, we took the concrete off there. And he'll pull the line down there and he'll check their square as well. If they're not completely square, it's not the end of the world. Um, but we certainly like to get within 20 mil, John, at least, don't we? Yeah, within 20 mil. But bearing in mind, when you're putting these rods in, your lines are gonna move a little bit. But if you're within 20 mil, then what we can do then, we can square it up when we actually build the walls. Um, and a square frame means that when you cut your roof timbers, they're all the same length, um, if that makes sense, yeah? Right, so what he's done, uh, these ground pins, John, you can carry on with that if you want. Let me get a ground pin, where are ground pins? They're, um, they're from tool station. Um, I think they're about 20 odd pounds, but you don't have to use them. You could just drive some stakes into the ground and pull strings on them instead. Um, and a string line, you'll find that you'll use the string line quite a few times throughout the build. So it's an essential bit of kit. It's about three pound 50 from tool station again. Like I said before, if you buy a build pack, one of the pages in the build pack is a full itemized list of consumables and screws and stuff like that from tool station with the product code numbers as well. So you can just go in and just order everything you need for that build with very, very little wastage if you build to it. So you can see what he's doing now, look. He's putting the square down. Um, we will answer some questions a bit later on. We just need to get this set up and start digging. Um, right, let me see if I can show you this, Jen. What he's trying to do is trying to get that line dead in line with that side that's square. Can you see that on camera enough, yeah? And then what he'll do then, you happy with that, John? What he'll do then, he'll ask Davey to pull that line in or out. Davey, you want to go further that way with your pin, mate? Yeah, right, right past Davey, yeah. That, yeah, yeah yeah, he probably didn't need to go that. That's, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Because, of course, what, what happens is he wants to go past where we were doing the other line, like we have here, so the pins actually go past the corner of the build. So what he's doing now, he's looking down to get that line in line with that side of the square, and he'll know that corner's practically square, if not completely square. Yeah? Perfect, David. So what he'll do now, David will drive that into the floor, if there's no rock in there. There is. Can that sledge on, please? You want it to go in pretty far because I don't want it to move. That's it, a rock now. So he'll tie that off against there. So you can see what's happening now. He's got his back wall 
will square off the pad. He's now got his front elevation wall, which will be the bifold door wall. Um, you can see why we've took that concrete off there now. Skip's not arrived yet, um, so we're going to have to bag them up as we take it out. And what he'll do now, are you going to do the front or the side, the back end there, John? You're doing the no, back end there. both legs and then measure like said on top okay. and then just join them together. So what he's going to do, he's going to do exactly the same here now. Um, what he'll do, I'll get a tape measure on there now and I'm going to hook it on that rod. And what we want is 5.1 or thereabouts and that will allow us that will allow us to have a five metre room internally, approximately anyway. You can move that, we'll just get an hammer there, we'll get a bit on there. But you can see what he's done there, so he's got his back line on, he's got his side line on, he's got this other side line, and then he'll do with the front elevation. It's a bit backward way around is this one, because normally this would be the front of the building, this is where the bifold doors would go, but because the house elevation is down there, just don't spin around and shut house all the time, um, the bifold doors will be on that side there, so there'll be a window here, and here, There'll be a door into the storeroom or the door may be here yet. The customer's not quite decided on that one yet. But that's it. Um, once he's done them lines, we will then talk about um, the holes, digging the holes. We'll talk about the rods as well. Shall I talk about these now while he's doing that, yeah? Right, so this is the rod. It's a metre long. It's an M24 galvanised threaded bar. Um, right, I always get asked these questions and I, I don't... And I always... I always say in the videos where they come from, they come from BAPS bolts, that's B-A-P-P-S bolts, and they deliver nationwide. They do the full kit. So basically what you've got is you meet a threaded bar, then you've got a nut, then you've got a 10 mil, 10 mil thick, 100 by 100 square plate washer, then trapped between another nut, and it's that spacing apart, that's what we go for there. Um, the reason behind that is just because it's a handy, you know, to gauge like that. But what happens is they'll dig a hole at 600 deep, which will probably be about there. So that's the top of the hole. So you imagine there's a hole like that now, yeah? That will be filled with concrete. That will be encased in concrete. And then when the building is pushing down on this rod, that rod will not push through the concrete because that thread, that washer there stops it from driving through if you didn't put that on and you didn't have the nuts the rod would potentially drive through the concrete and go into the ground um, and there's another three nuts on there simply because what will happen is when he's got the rods in and we're good to go then we will level down but we'll show level in tomorrow i'd imagine and nuts will be wound down to the same level all the way around um, and then what we'll do then he'll wind that one down as well He'll lock them off against each other like that so they don't drop. The shoe will go on there, the timber will go on, and then that one will lock the base to the rod. But we will talk again about that. So that's BAPS bolts. Um, I'll just write that down if you want to pause it. That's how it's spelled. There's four or five of them around the country and they deliver nationwide. Um, and it is a one meter threaded rod and it is M24 galv and it is 8.8 uh, you can get 4.4 8.8 is a stronger one um, but there isn't there's nothing in it if you're getting 4.4 from somewhere else I won't certainly worry about it neither would I worry about it being galvanized we use zinc for ages the only reason why I use galvanized now is we get them at the same price um, we cut the zinc, we left them in buckets of water and they very rarely rust much. But if you Google rust rates, that will not fail in your lifetime. Anybody watching this that will not fail, you'll all be long dead and buried before... What's up, Scar Spider? <laughs> um, we'll all be dead and buried before these rods remotely fail, so don't worry about that. Right, so he's put his other line on there now. If you have a look down there, you will see... So whoever set this concrete pad out before, has set out really well because you can see there that's pretty much parallel on that concrete pad isn't it yeah and if Jen steps back she'll see the depth of the concrete so to go back to yesterday if you're going to do a concrete base this is what you need to be doing look it's getting the viscreen under it and you can see there look they put hardcore on and it certainly looks like it's been whacked um John's looking at that now thinking we've got to dig through that but it looks small isn't it look like oh better than big hardcore isn't it <laughs> So, but that's what you want to do. You need to dig down so you can see like, that's four, five, six inches. He should have maybe four inches of stone on there. Um, and then you want your visqueen 
A blind in the sand is normally good because a blind in the sand on top of that stone will stop any stone penetrating the DPC, which will stop any damp coming up through the DPC, which of course is a damp proof course, or a DPM, damp proof membrane. Um, but that's how you'd want to be doing a concrete base, but of course then you need your insulation on there and then you've lost four inches as well. And this is a very level plot. If your garden's like that, um, a concrete pad's not really for you, I wouldn't have thought. Okay. 3.1 Yes, please, mate. So what we'll do now, he's got his back. I don't know if you'd say that's the back. We normally say that's the back, but that will actually be the back work because that'll be the front. But he's got his back, he's got his two sides and he's going to do his front now as well. And it's looking pretty square, so we'll be happy with that. And as soon as he's got them on, we will then dig holes. Right, we're going to dig the back line first. Because um, it, it's a five metre, we will have six holes on the back, on the back wall. Right. There's your back wall, front sides. We have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That distance between that that first hole and that corner, approximately 200 millimetres. These then will be evenly spaced. That distance between that hole and that corner there will be 200 millimetres. And like I say, evenly spaced. And that's how we do them. We don't go more than 1.2 apart do we jump no. no nothing more than 1.2 um the closer the better but five meters six on back um if the build pack says different go with the build pack um like i said i'm building these commercially so what we'll do um we use a grafter basically it's a long hole shovel we normally have two lugs on it like that but we've cut ours off um simply because when you go in the hole it drags more crap in and john's going to go and post the hole shovel um, which basically is like a massive pair of tweezers that just goes down the hole and digs it out. And we don't use a post hole auger um, because we've never, well, we have. Uh, how many jobs really out of all the jobs we've done, John, could you use the post hole auger? No more than three. Right, so all the jobs we've done, we possibly could have used it three times. Um, a decent still one's about 1,500 quid, nearly 2,000 pound maybe. Um, and it just wouldn't get used, so we just dig them out by hand. We're going to put the rubbish in bags because the skip isn't here yet, but... Um, and then we'll bag it all up, leave it in the middle, and we'll go get rid of it. Right, so the first one is going to be approximately there, John, yeah? Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to remove the string line. Let's get that bit of concrete out of the way. And basically what I'll do, I'll break the hole, and then John will dig the hole. And what we'll do then, once we've got a little bit out, I'll show you now. What, what, once we've got a little bit out, that's the last one. The damp course off that pad is stopping John from getting it right. There's a lot better crap in the ground already. While right. you're digging the ocean last year, yeah, fire away now, Jen. So, at Paz 99, be good to have more detail on the different challenges faced when digging out the holes for footings like tree roots, discarded old bricks, and what's your opinion on ground screws? But I think you answered that. I think I answered yes, didn't I? Um, what we'll do, um, this ground's not looking bad. I'm straight onto earth there. He hasn't actually put a lot of hardcore in there. Um, bricks, we'll just smash through them. If we can't get through them, we'll get the can go and go through them. But you are looking to get... It's a very fat man's sweat. Um, you are looking to get about 600 in depth, John, isn't that right, yeah? Yes. Tree roots, John, what's your, what's your, what's the crack with tree roots? Well, depends on how big they are, but if they're not a main tree root, you can get rid of it and get it out of the way, and you dig it out of the way. Use a reciprocating saw to help you, an hand saw, um, and that's it, basically, just a bit of hard work. Right, where do you, uh, Ross has asked, where do you get rods and hangers from? Rods, rods come from bats, ours come from bats, um, bats bolts in Leeds, there's one in Castleford, um, and there's another, I think they've got another two around country, but like I said before, they will deliver anywhere nationwide. We haven't brought any shoes today, so I can't show you the shoes, but I'm assuming that's what he means by hangers, Jen. Yeah. What you need to be careful is, my hand is going close to that and you don't want to catch your hand on that because it will... Francis MC Namara. Who? 
Francis MC Namara. You were talking about pillars with blocks and filling with concrete on a building roughly five by three. How many pillars would be needed? Five by three. Um, pillars. I, I would put four pillars on front, four up back. I'd put four down middle as well, and then three on each side. Very much like the rod system. Um, yeah, that, that would be enough, because you've got a bigger, your bigger, bigger area for your timber sit on your, your breeze block. They're about 420, your breeze block, John. Like They're about 420 or something like that. So you think you've got a breeze block that long, you've got quite a lot of um, a lot of timber sat on it, so you'd need less than you do with the rods. But you want a damp course under it as well then. Right, what we're doing there, look, just have a quick look at that. We'll just keep pausing, Jen. Yep. Um, I'm just going to look down there and make sure the hole is in line with that string line, which it is, yeah. What we'll do, we'll drop it. If Derby... We're not at depth yet, are we, John? No, we're not. So what we're looking for is that rod to sit in that hole like that, yeah, and to touch that string line just like that. And you can just see there, it's just off that pad. Um, we may have to little nudge that back a little bit, John, I don't know yet. All right, but we'll see when the next one goes in. Um, right, hole-wise, we're looking at a 600 depth on the graft normally has. You see, see that weld ring on there? They often have something around 600 or around it. So rather than getting your tape out every two minutes, that's what you can do. So just put that in there. You can see there where the, the weld is on there. So I'm probably maybe 50, 60 mil short of that concrete. Um, our depth of the hole, we will probably take it down another, maybe 70 mil and that will be deep enough for it, John. Uh, could do, John, but I don't really want to because we're getting close. If we don't have to, then we won't. But what we might do, we might put the rod on this side of the line, as John's just said. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how we go. All right, so you ready for another question? Go on. Steve's bit of this, bit of that. So he's had eight inch reinforced concrete slab put down, which sits slightly higher than the ground. It has membrane underneath. 12 metres by 6 metres, but Massive. he's building it. But he's building his garden room 5.3 by 12 by 12 to give an overhang at the front of 700 mil. What would be best to build up from the slabs? Two 4x2s laid flat on a DPM question mark and he's also thinking of using 225 by 75 six meters for the roof joist um right so sorry is his build bigger than his build's not as big as his pad is it no it's not right no. so what the, the issue you can have with that is then any rain that comes down is going to sit on the pad that's visible ideally if you're building a pad what you want is like let's say that's your pad you want your building to sit flush with the outside of your pad. So by the time you've clad it, any rainwater that comes will run down the cladding and drop off the pad rather than going under the pad, because of course it goes under the pad. You're gonna have water issues then with um, any timber. And fair enough, if you've got a DPC, that's great. But if you can avoid that, that's what you need to be doing. Um, as far as your, bit, your timber's concerned, bolt it, DPC down, bolt it, um, thunderbolts, frame fixing screws, anything like that will, will bolt it down to your, um, to your concrete. What's what's the question about the roof timber, sorry? Um so Are we good on that one, John? He said what would be best of other He's also thinking of using 225 by 15 six meters for the roof joist. 225 That's what it's put 225 C16 by, by 75 yeah. and six meters. Um I mean, that sounds like you've got that off a span table, which is good. You've obviously got planning permission. Um, but, I mean, if it's on the span table and it's good, then you're good. That sounds like it. I mean, without having a look at the span table now, but that certainly sounds like you've, you've got that off a span table for that size. But if, if it's under permitted development, you're not going to be able to use that size timber. Um, and there's a root there. Sorry, I'm just concentrating on this. There, look, can you there's see that? A, there's a root there, there look. Can I look? I'm going to say bye bye to this. Yeah, so there's a root there. There's a big old corner for there, look. So, what we're going to do is get through that. Have we brought precip today? We were thinking we might hit some roots here. The grafter will generally go if you hit it hard enough. 
John can't get in there yet because I know from experience he's not going to be able to get his post or shovel in that hole yet. He'll just grab the rope. Yeah. Right. yeah. Get nothing. We've built, we've built um, close to trees before, haven't we, John? Yeah. Because if it's a big route and we can't take it out, we'll just move the rod across out the way. <coughs> Excuse me. You just let me know when you're ready for a question. Go on. Will the rod system handle the weight? Oh, this is CJK. Will the rod system handle the weight of an eight before building with a pull table or jacuzzi in it? Um, so the rod system will handle the weight of everything. The, the jacuzzi, what I would personally do, one, one litre of water weighs one kilo, John, is that right? Yeah. Litres are from, your, it's from your fish tank days. Well. I know 25 litres of water, whatever, anyway, let's put it that Yeah, way. a, a litre weighs a kilo, so if you've got a decent sized hot tub, that's a lot of water, a lot of weight concentrated in one particular location. So I would, if I were using the rod system, I would then put more rods in that location. But what I would personally do, there's some metal there, look. Is it? What I would personally do, is put up a, a concrete pad underneath it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the kind of crap you're getting in gardens. Oh, oh. We're getting your way. See, so that route there, I've just got past the side of it. And that should be enough for John to get down. Next question. Um, S-Z-I-M. Do you need to put rebar inside shuttering that you fill with concrete? Um, you don't need to, but I certainly would. Any pad over a decent size, because um, of the weight of it. If the ground is unstable at any point, or if you're not wiping down properly, it's going to want to crack anyway. So the rebar will certainly benefit you there by stopping it from cracking. Um, for what it costs, I'd definitely put rebar in any concrete over a certain size. Footings for a house, unless it's specified, then no, because you've only got your trenched width and depth. Um, but a pad like this, say, uh, for instance, I'm surprised there's no rebar in this one because it's a big old pad and he's done it well. Um, but yeah, I'd definitely put rebar in. Next one. Mojo Jojo. Mojo Jojo. <laughs> uh, you say you're governed by 2.5 metres high, but if you use a single pitched roof, you can go up three metres. So he's red anyway. Why have you chosen 2.5 flat roof? Um, that, that, so that, that's not correct. The actual, it dep depends what part of the permit development you've read. If you are within two metres of a garden room, the highest point of your build can be no bigger than 2.5 to the highest point of land adjacent to it, which means you can only have um, a flat roof rather than a pitch roof. Um, if you're within two metres, you can't go above 2.5 regardless of what you do. Right, so that leads on to the next question. Yeah. Yego Andrev, you were, he applied for planning permission and it was granted three months later and cost around £300 for everything. Why are people afraid to do that when they can get their desired height? People could get 2.3 by or 2.5 internally and get a warm roof and have peace of mind as it's approved by council. Um, so it's people's own decisions. Like, just because you got... Your planning doesn't mean next door's going to get their planning, do you know? But, um, pla planning and council, yeah, are really, depending where you are in the country and which particular officer is dealing with your inquiry, you can get a completely different answer. That's deep enough to win you bond now, John. Right um, so I guess, I guess permit development means you can just go and build it anyway, yeah? Um, you can apply for planning. I, I don't know why some people do and some people don't. I guess it's a personal choice. I didn't um, know that you had to pay an extra three hundred pound. Though. You do, yeah. But and, I, and, I, and the way I see this going, right? Because garden rooms are so popular and so relevant, right? That the council are going to go. Do you know what? We can make some money out of this. And if you want a permitted development garden room or a shed, they're going to start charging you for the privilege of it. That's that's the way that is one hundred percent going. You think about it, right? Um, 
I don't know, maybe 20,000 people in each county build a garden room. There's a lot of money there to be had. I think it'll definitely go that way. Right, so we're 200 in, 200 in. We've got another four to dig here. So what I'm thinking, let me just position bits and bobs so you can see, look. Um, well, I've won there. I've won there. And we'll have one there. So you can see there, look, so we've got, just move them, John. Just, just move them a minute, mate. If Davy stands back, so we've got the 200 hole there, and then each one of them indicates another hole, so that'd be your six holes. Yeah? Right, what we're going to do, Jen, we're going to dig these holes now, we're going to stop filming now, just so we yep. can get these holes dig as concrete, and you can ask questions this afternoon, yeah? Yep. Right, we've got quite a lot of questions, fellow. so what Jen's going to do, while we're having breakfast, she's going to try and run through some of the questions, so I'll to excuse me while I'm eating, but we are here trying to earn a wage as well as everything else. Um, and just while well, I know somebody asked what we're having, um, today, I don't know what this is, it's some kind of turkey and bacon sandwich or something. David, what are you eating, mate? Chicken sandwich. Chicken sandwich. Jim, what do you, and he's got a, what, a bit of chocolate, Kit Kat? Chocolate as well. Jim, um, what you got? <laughs> I've got a packet of crisps, I've had two cakes. And she's had a bacon sandwich this morning already. <laughs> I wasn't going to say <laughs> Before that. we even got out of that. That, that was Paul Walker who asked what we had for breakfast. And okay, I think John's, John's, um, John's also, what well, we, we don't make sandwiches. There's nothing more in my life, more soul destroying than going home and making a sandwich for the next morning. Um, I know it costs more money buying a sandwich, but I just, I, I haven't got that kind of mentality to go. I just like, what do I want to eat tomorrow? I don't know what I want to eat tomorrow. <laughs> sorry about that. Right, so I'm going to ask first. Mm? Right, I'm, I'm sorry about the name. Let me just figure, because... Be careful what you've wrote down there. I, I'm just showing <laughs> his name. Jex Claus. No relation to Santa Claus, as we said yesterday. So can you build, can you join a garden room to a house? Um... You could do, um, under permitted development, I guess. But once you get building in control, I think you'll have to be putting um, the concrete base down because as of yet, I've, I've not known anybody where they've had building control out and they've approved the rod system. Um, I'm, I'm sure in the specification and testing it would get, it would pass, but I don't know. Um, but the thing is when you build, if you build an extension on the house under permitted development, once you knock through or once you have an opening to the house, it becomes part of the house and building control needs to be involved. So if you're going to do a garden room and take a door out or a window out and put an opening into your house, then building control will get involved. And it's all different kettle of fish then, um, different specs on different materials and stuff like that. But in theory, you could do, because you can put a timber framed extension onto um, a house, which in, 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 in essence is what a garden room is. Right, okay, so Yego Andrev, sorry if I've got the pronunciation wrong again. What do you think of the Milwaukee drilling impact kit at Toll Station? It's 200 quid. Um, it'd be okay if you're just going to do some stuff around your house or build one garden room or build two garden rooms maybe, but you need to upgrade to the better model. Um, I'm sure it's about £450 um, for the other ones John's got, isn't it? Yeah, I can't remember. The fuel one, M18 fuel one. Um, but like I said, the one the one at Tool Station, or what is it, Scrub Fix or Tool Station? Yeah, he said Tool Station. I, I've seen them pop up lots of times. Um, yeah, they're the good quality, and it'll see you right for a few builds, no problem at all. No, that's what I had, but I, I, I want confident. You couldn't get used to, you couldn't get used to no, could you? No, it was too much power when it would come in to put the doors in. Yeah, um, there's, a lot, there's a lot of power in the Milwaukee, and it's got a, it's got a fast start as well. Um, even even when you quit slow with the trigger, um, it does it does jump off a lot. I know John will get upset about it, and that's why he threw it in the river. Yeah, he that's won't what, he won't use his either foot doors. No, if, if we're doing if we're doing like when we're fitting doors, because you're that afraid of it jumping off, we'll, we'll go back to. I always use my Makita because it is best. Makita's so best. we've got another question here, JBI Group. What do you think about sit panels? He thinks his build will be quicker using them. They are thermal panels, panels sandwiched between two OSB sheets for walls. Yeah, absolutely fine. Um, the problem with six panels is they're made for a specific um, build size. So what you do, you get in touch with the company and say, right, I'm having a 5 by 3.7. And they'd make it for that size. So your base has to be 100% spot on for that as well. Whereas we'll come to this job, um, we'll go down. And the customer might change his mind between me going out to price the job and me coming to build the job. So you might want it slightly different, and with six panels we can't go down that route. We, you know, we might have to move it a little bit, we might come across, like I don't know, maybe a sewer, and we've got to move it or change the shape of it. So six panels wouldn't work for us, really. Um, 
and Anderson all the time. But there's nothing wrong with them. They're good. Um, I'm not sure how... I've, I've seen them six panels and I'm not sure how they get over bifold doors because we were the only people... We were, I'm not bothered what anybody says. We are the only people who were putting steel above bifold doors until we started doing it and then lots do it now. But the, you do get sag on your roof. Snow loading, just general sagging in timber. So with six panels, I don't know because I don't see any kind of structural steel above it anyway. But Right, so Mike, not your average builder, KHM. I'll just wait for you to... I have to answer this, sorry. So pause sorry. it? Yeah, we'll pause it. I want, I want some of them. Right, Mike, not Mike, not your average builder, KHM. Hi Liam, I get the impression some people think that if they're under permitted development, they can knock up what they want. Would it be worth people checking with local authority as a precaution? You certainly can, but um, as I said before, our local authorities, I'm right down to the building inspector at the time, completely interpret the rules differently. I know in Leeds, you don't have a problem with permitted development. Um, I know there's a thing where... Um, that the, the, the pose the question to your neighbours and even if they object you can still have it so what is the point in that I don't I don't get it at all but I know in Leeds you permit development you can just go for it right next question Brian Power does the thickness of the joist hanger and nails not really matter under the floor panels no it doesn't um I did put the level on the last job but I never put it in the video um for no other reason that it just didn't fit in the video basically but um I have seen this question pop up before the head of the twist nail it's probably maybe a millimetre, if that. Um, but by the time you've got your floor down, you've hammered your joist hanger down, you've nailed your nails in, you've screwed your floor down, it's all level. You don't, it, it doesn't go like that basically. So no, it, it doesn't affect it as long as you nail them in properly and you flatten your joist hangers. I'm not going to eat that because it's rude. Right, stop <laughs> next one. RC Esky, what height can you build without planning? So. If you are within two metres of the boundary, 2.5 is your maximum regardless of roof structure. Um, if you're away two metres, you can go up to three. Uh, if you're more than two metres away from the boundary, you can go up to three metres. Right, so next question. Debra, okay. What happened to the camper build? Uh, the camper build, right. So what happened is we, we had a lot on. Um, I had a lot on in my personal life as well, and I, I didn't feel really in a good place um so i put on hold and then winter came um and then the dark nights came so there was no time to do that anyway and then the pod i wanted to finish the pod the pod's now finished you need to buy a ticket if you're watching this right it's all free all this information's free we're all here sat here at our lunchtime giving you this information free right buy a two pound ticket and I'll, I'll be over at moon right um so the camper van is still going to go ahead um the floor is insulated the sound deadening's on um and boy did it sweat over the winter Jeez, it was dripping off the roof um we sat in the back of it when we were doing the roof and we banged the side and it was like raining off the roof inside but it's 100 percent going ahead it's still sat on my drive um and i will i will finish it i will tour <laughs> i will tour in it for a little bit and then i'll raffle it off right so uh, it's hard to say this name nyqua 66 do you travel um we, we tried it and it didn't work Every, uh, lo the logistics are a problematic um, so there is enough work in problems in Leeds at this moment in time but I am going to go ahead with the pod system um, and I'm kind of thinking that that'll be us made and we won't have to travel then we'll just stay in Leeds carrying on doing that Phil Oaks how do you know how many rods to use? Um, so what we generally do regardless of what the build pack says the build pack is designed to be the most economical for you um, structurally I'm doing these commercially so we may put in more than what is actually in the build pack but if it's a five meter there'll be six on the back row six on the front um, four or five in the middle depending and then four each side <coughs> and that's how we work it out um, Phil Oaks again what's the mi minimum distance you can have between your fence and garden room um, the minimum distance you can build right up but what you've got to bear in mind is say if the pitch of your roof is and which I've fallen foul of um, we put the gutter on the gutter who's overhanging the fence line um, and the neighbour who's over it who's overhanging it cost me £100 to wash money to keep you quiet because <laughs> couldn't, he couldn't get his fence panel out so I offered him £100 to move his fence and he took the cash um, but so I think I think John worked out. I think it was like two hundred and seventy mil to be precise. But it's about three hundred mil. You'll be good. George Webstale, could you custom a build pack for a workshop build with a one meter square window and a standard size door? So basically, a garden room used as a workshop. Um, no, because it, it takes it takes far too much time to do custom um, 
custom build packs. Um, I, I used to do it years ago. I used to sell them on, on um, eBay. Um, that's how where I first started selling build packs. Um, and they were customised. But then people would proper like... There was one guy, right? And I swear to God, right? He had about seven rooms in the build. And it took me ages to do the build pack. But I obviously committed and bought it. And I thought, this isn't happening again. Seven rooms in, the, in a garden room, John. Seven rooms. And they're all little tiny ones. RCS gear again. Worker of the year. Worker of the year. Right. Well, well, last, come here, you two. Come on, come on, come on, John, in. Right. <coughs> the question has been asked, worker of the year. Now, are we going on last year or this year? <laughs> right, I'm going to nominate Davy because Davy never has a day off. He slept in twice, didn't you, Davy? Yeah. yeah. And he was coming both times. John? Yeah. Oh, you're going to nominate yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had a day off and I've never slept in. Oh, true, yeah, yeah. John's never had a day off. You? You've had a day off. But, Do you but... When you were dying that time and you were in hospital with Covid. In you had a day off then. years ago. Yeah, but you had a day off. Well, three years I had for a couple of weeks off then, to be fair. Yeah. That's the only ever time. Right, next one. Right, so but this just is... What we're going to do, John, is fly through all these questions. So, so Simon... In the build packs, does it include the main electric box, back box, sockets, heater, cable, bifolds, or is it the ba basic no frills wood build? Uh, so in the build pack, um, I'm not quite sure what, because somebody actually did complain. I'm, I've had two complaints ever about build packs. Um, one, I, I just he just didn't like it, and the other one complained that the materials weren't involved for ninety six pounds. So what does it not include in the <laughs> listings? Um, it, it includes it includes everything. So in the build pack, you get uh, a full timber list, so everything you need for your timber. Yeah, you get a full uh, consumables list for tool station, which includes all your one point your one point five cable, your two point five cable, your cable clips, your screws. Um, your splice plates, because I know they're going to come up in a question. Everything, screws, joist hangers, nails, every, everything is included. It even tells you about the heat you require for that size build. Um, it gives you uh, suggested suppliers for the doors and windows, uh, the fascia and gutter. In. Everything, everything is cool. You don't have to like think about it all yourself. And right. that's why it's, it's a bargain at that price. And I may put them, I, I may actually put them up, because this video hand in hand. Right, so you're thinking about buying one, you better buy one now, because otherwise I'm going to <laughs> right, Rob Stubbs. Bob, so, <laughs> Rob Stubbs. My workshop was 2.5 metres high. If I needed to go higher, I would have needed planning permission. How long does the planning process take? It varies. It varies. Uh, somebody posed this question earlier on. They told they said it was three weeks, didn't they? Three months. Oh, three months. Um, I, I suppose it's, it's worth the wait if, if you want it. Um, but I think your average is about six weeks. It's it? about That's six weeks, John. Average, so, yeah. so I think I think what it is now. I think a lot of people are still using COVID as a big excuse, um, and that's why things take longer. Because I know we're trying to sell a house at the moment, and the solicitors and everything is just taking everything. It's absolutely insane, and they're just blaming on COVID all the time. But John says about six weeks. I think he's right about planning for six weeks. Derek Robertson, garden slopes down towards the house. If the garden is dug down to be level and a retaining wall put in, would the 2.5 be from the top of the wall or the new ground, which will be 700 metres low, uh, millimetres lower? The 2.5 will be from the highest piece of land adjacent to the building, which will be the old ground you have dug out. We've done it before. Um, we, we dug one out before. No, we didn't dig it out. He had it out in Linton, didn't he, John? He had his builder dig it out, didn't he? And that was about five, 600 lower because he wanted a gym. We wanted overhead movement, um, and I think we might have had nearly three meters internal. And he dug down about six meters, but the height is taken. So if you dig down and you've got like a 500 returning wall, it's taken from the top of that returning wall where the land is, and that's right. why people dig down. So you can dig down, but you might go down below your water table, and then you'll think about water coming out of that land. So you'll need some kind of drainage as well. Don't forget that. And um, it needs to use spice, splice, spiders. <laughs> you need spiders. <laughs> He needs to use splice plates because of the size of his build. Should he stagger them so they don't all join at the same point? He, assume, he assumes he will also need to use for the front and back trimmers for the roof, but does that impede the fascia? The, okay. bill, the build pack suggests buying eight, but he can't figure out where the other two will be used other than the base. Right, so the reason why there's eight, they're coming packs of four, um, and in the base you need um, two, four, six, you need six. 
So that's why it's eight, because they're coming packs of four. You can't, well, from tool session, you can't buy them in, in singular. Um, splice plates, I've been asked lots of times. So we're going to join splice plates today. That's what we're going to do today. We'll wait for this concrete. So we'll have one joint at the back there. We'll have one joint at the middle there, and then we'll have the other joint there. So we will stagger them, but we will not put the joint under where the bifold doors go if that happens. Um, oh, and you don't need it on the fascia because what will happen is um, you'll have your roof timbers and then your 5x2 isn't long enough for your front trimmer. You will join two 5x2s on one of your roof trimmer just together. It doesn't need splice plates. Francis MC Namara, is the raffle open to Ireland? No, I think you did answer this. Yeah, but... the raffle is open to Ireland. Um, the further the better, although it will probably bite me in the ass. Um, what I would like to do is somebody who win it quite, quite a distance away so that we can crane it over my house, we can travel there, we can crane it over their house and get it in and make a nice video of that so yes it's definitely open to ireland um pete james using your own concrete mix for rod for rods ratio three to one ballast and cement how much roughly will he need for around 26 holes <sighs> that's a very difficult one to answer isn't it john because nobody knows how big your hole is <laughs> 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 um, I, I know I know, so, so the build pack is designed to keep costs down, so mixing it by hand is the most economical way, but it is a ball breaker. Um, we did it for a long time, didn't we, John? It is it's hard work. Um, what you're better off doing and what we're going to do now, the concrete guys are going to turn up. The minimum they charge is a cube. They're going to barrow it in for us. Um, we'll probably use less than half cube, maybe half cube here. It'll be £225, I think, at last, last payment, won't it, John? Is that about right? Um, but going back to your question, I can't answer your question because I don't know how big your hole is. Um, right. Basically, so different size holes will take different amounts. Right. Christopher. One, one minute, John's going to. Oh, you could point. answer it a little bit. Go on. If you do your standard size hole, which is like, what is it, a bit, a bit wider than a grafter, might yeah. be three or four hundred wide and six hundred deep. If you do a three to one mix, you can probably do four to one to be fair, but yeah. if you do it four to one, you'd get away with four sand and one cement. You, you should get a couple of holes out of it, no problem. That's just a guide for you to go on when you're buying your sand and your cement. If you buy bulk bags from Selco, because they're 35 kilos of ballast in, in them bulk bags. Right, Christopher Smith, looking to build a garden room in summer. What are the rules around boundaries? He wants to build right up to the boundary within one metre. Does he need permission for this? Um, and does he need fire rating cladding on the outside of the building? Right, so the, right, well, let's talk about it. You can build it right up to the boundary, but don't forget, you need to get in to build it as well. What we're going to do on this one, we're going to build and clad the back wall and stand it up because it's that close to the boundary, which is good. We'll still get us gutter on. We won't be hanging over the boundary. That's all good. Um, fire cladding. Um, so, it, again, it's open to interpretation. Right, the last time we had a building inspector out was in that job at Denby Dale, John. Do you remember? Yeah. He came out, he put his head round back, it was metal clad, and he went, lovely, and off he went, and that was it. Now, I know some of them will allow you to put timber cladding on and paint it with, like, um, a fire retardant sort of covering. Um, some will allow that. Up to, right up to the opposite end of the spectrum where they want breeze block and um, but if you think so you've built a breeze block right so you can permit development yeah 2.5 you've built out a block so that it doesn't set on fire yeah but then you've got a flat roof because you have to have a flat roof because it's 2.5 so you've got your soffit and face you've got a timber roof and rubber so it's going to be a fire it's going to burn anyway so the 2.5 is a lot of bollocks really because what it should have is a pitched roof with concrete tiles on which wouldn't set on fire so it, it doesn't make any sense build it what you're best off doing is just getting in touch but once you get in touch with council that's it what they say that's gonna happen so sometimes you're better off just doing going along getting your metal cladding on which obviously doesn't burn um but you know the timber in the wall does burn someone wants you to put fire retardant plaster inside you all down to the council and the particular inspector but once you get them involved that's it you've opened the can of worms and um, this one's about the build packs again dead ink wants to buy a build pack but the only issue is he needs a free 3.5 by 3.5 would you recommend he gets a free by free 0.5 or the free by free which will be easier for him to do the maths and extend from um i would buy a free by 3.5 right deep nice and it's a one yeah there. Right, okay. You, you won't actually need that much more timber. Some, not much at all. Someone, uh, Matthew Cabot, is asked what size the base is for the garage. This, this one? Yeah, I'd be sure so, yeah. Um, it was... 
I rubbed it off the other day, but it was five. Two seven ninety. Well, he's got a good memory, Dave. Really. Mm. Two seven ninety wide, and it was five one forty, wasn't it? It was something long. Like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's right. what the space was. Yeah. Paul Dobson joining the main four freeze. He's using gang nail plates. Is this strong enough? And when all the joists and the floor is added, will it add to the strength? Yeah, absolutely fine. So you've got a rod there. You've got a rod there. You've got your joint in the middle. You've got two splice plates with uh, twist nails on, um, and then you put your twenty-two mil egg flooring on the top. It's all screwed down. Then you've got your bottom wall plate which is fixed to that they ain't going nowhere and we have uh spliced them before wrong haven't we john and that's stripped them apart and it's it's hard to get them apart. i've done that on that as well have you done that as well yeah. yeah right okay um so michael bonehill gardens on a 30 degree slope would you recommend building on a breeze building a breeze, breeze block wall as a support for the timber base to go on at the lowest end of the garden room or could i use longer rods instead what's the maximum length of rod i could use and how far down do i need to concrete it in right so without knowing how high that because 30 degrees over a meter is nothing 30 degrees over six meters is quite a lot so i wouldn't know how long your rods are but we generally wouldn't go past 300 400 with a john sticking out of ground so once you get past that i would definitely dig a trench get some concrete in it some breeze blocks build them up and build that part of the frame off there but don't forget your dpc under your timber now we touched on this yesterday ziggy 2k is in the netherlands and he can't find any pressure treated for freeze just c18 for freeze can he use that or is there a better alternative um use that yeah but buy some preserver get some preserver and blast, get it all on it get your cut ends all preserved up and everything and you'll be good right okay. netherlands john we're worldwide, mate. <laughs> right, so Anne is doing a 7 by 3 as per the build pack, but with some updated methods we use today, does he need to support the back wall until the roof goes on? It'll be a massive wall once the OSB goes on to square it to stop the racking. Right, what we'll do, so what we used to do and what the build pack suggests is that you build the wall frame, you stand it up and then you, you, you sheet it afterwards. The reason why we don't do it that way now is because we're all aiming for more speed, but the build pack is designed if you're going to build it on your own and that's why you're not going to lift a 7 metre wall on your own without killing yourself, um, especially when it's got the osb on so what i would do if you are on your own build your frame stand it up right so david can i have that notice board please um i mean because we used to do this didn't we john yeah, exactly. right so that's your floor um build your frame so that's your frame there yeah and there are all your timbers so you stood it up let's say i'm going to exaggerate it. let's say it's wrapped that way yeah so it's all, it's all leaning that way so what you want to do is get um Preferably use one of your roof timbers or something like that, and then what you want to do is fix it, fix it, so it's be sticking up floor there like that, and then have a diagonal bracing like that. And what you'll have to do is rack that frame back so it's plumb and fix it through every single one of them, and that will hold it plumb that way, so it's now plumb that way, yeah. And then what you do, because it's seven meters, you need to put some braces, three braces, one at ends, one at middle, one at other end, and that will stop you all from blowing over because once the wind gets over. 7 metre wall will go over. Right, we've only got a few more to do with that. Right, go on then. Ziggy 2K, have you ever built a garden room with steel frames? Never, no. Um, uh, oh, can't remember the company. The company tried to sell me one really cheap to get me to do it and do a video on it. And the reason why I didn't, because I asked him, well, it's like a C channel. I went, how do you insulate properly in there? And he couldn't give me an answer. And then another company says, well, you just cut your insulation to fit in there. But that sounded like a hell of a lot of work. And, yeah, it's a metal frame. They're expensive. And you've still got work. You've still got to board the floor, board the roof and board the walls, haven't you? Um, they're, they're too expensive for my liking. Right, so Steve Pexman, what are your thoughts on the superfoil insulation? Superfoil insulation? Um, superfoil insulation is generally used in loft conversions, um, where you're tight for space and that, um, and that's where they allow it. But I don't know what the, the thermal differences between PIR, but if PIR wasn't as good as thermal, uh, thermal foil insulation then that's what they'd be using on all extensions and stuff like that wouldn't they i would have thought anyway um it's generally used in loft because it's you've got tight spaces and stuff like that right this will be the last one now um because we've got a uh, big roscoe to address but we'll do him okay. later um fire blaster do you test the timber for moisture before boarding no um so what we do most of the timber if you've got the timber yeah, a lot of timbers kept outside anyway um, um, what we'll do, we'll generally build it um, and it will naturally dry out itself, even in the winter time. 
can take a couple of months to dry out properly and you know you will get condensation running down your windows sometimes uh, because the building is still drying out but it'll dry out and if you screw it properly you won't get cracks because we sometimes get a little hair crack where your ceiling meets your wall don't you john just here and there but that, that's it that's all you get right do you want to answer one more quick one yeah go on rcsk are you ever going to plan a fans meeting I'm not sure. Might get killed. <laughs> might get lynched, I know. Um, I don't know. I suppose it might be fun sometime, right? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't like, like the idea of fans. I'm just, we'll just try to offer you some free advice and stuff, aren't we? Do you know what I mean? And we appreciate all the feedback we get as well. And Build Packs, look at the links. We're nominated for the Ox Choice Awards. You know, you're watching these videos, right? It costs you nothing to watch them. You build your garden room, you'll save yourself tens of thousands of pounds, no doubt. Maybe ten thousand pounds anyway. Let them know um, what category it is because people have been yeah, struggling. The, we're, we're the most charitable business, so the link will be there. Head to the most charitable business. You'll see Oakwood Garden Rooms. So if you can click on that, then we can all have a good night out and hopefully take home a trophy. Um, there'll be a link to Build Packs as well. And if you fancy buying a raffle ticket for two pounds, which will support candlelighters and support us as well, um, and you might have a chance of winning that pod or you take home twenty thousand pounds which is a massive amount of money for somebody okay is that right no all your questions yeah well, well i thought that you just wanted to crack on with work do you want to address big roscoe yeah let's let's have big roscoe <laughs> right okay let me just find this what time is it done oh, okay. right hold on one second <laughs> uh, it's, it's in time yeah what, what you've got to bear in mind as well um we're all set. Like breakfast time is over a long time ago, but that this wise this job will take probably a week longer than it should do, um, and this is going to start to be the beginning of this question. So he's addressed um, the fact that you said that you're going to be losing money on this job. Um, so he said you're going to lose money. I okay then. I've got my own joinery business, and that's a load of s h i t e. Nobody does jobs if they're not going to make money. I hate people with that same s h i t e. You'll be making a fortune. Okay, Big Roscoe, right, let me tell you the first thing, right? Anybody who calls himself Big Anything, right, <laughs> is not my kind of person. I see it on private number plates, big, big, big yeah. fella, big, boss. big, big boss, big man, big cheese, big dick, yeah. whatever. Big J. Uh, big J. <laughs> <laughs> right, so first of all, drop the big, right? Because no matter how tall or big you are, you're not that big. <laughs> right, secondly, right, if I make a thousand pounds profit, right, and then let's say this job takes longer, so I make £200 profit. I am losing money. I'm still making profit, but I'm still losing money. So I will lose money on this job because this job will take approximately one week extra. If Jen just pans around now, look. John, Davey, sat doing absolutely nothing. Jen's obviously on the camera. Um, and I'm sat here, nobody's doing anything, we're answering questions, right? So we are losing money as we speak. So he's done a second part to this. Go for it. Oh, he said, he, said he knows how much everything costs. I'll put a video up at the end of the build with a breakdown of materials and labour and how much you charge for your job and we will see if you're losing money. Right. You know how much everything costs. How much does David get paid? How much does David get paid a week? How much does John get paid a week? The only per how much does Jen get paid a week with? The only person that knows me, that, is them and me. Yeah, so you don't know everything. You don't know how much I'm paying. You'll know some stuff that I'm paying for, because I'll tell you, right? You don't know how long this job's going to take. You don't know how much it costs to fuel my van to get to this job. You don't know how much that portal will cost out there. You don't know how much skip skip's going to cost that's going to arrive. You don't know how much the concrete's going to cost. Yeah, you don't know the fact that I went out and bought that trolley last night for £30, which will be added on the job, isn't it, John? Yeah? You don't know how long it's going to take us to get this lot in that skip. So don't tell me you know how much, right, everything costs. Because, yeah, you might everything costs for your job that's granted you don't know how much everything costs for my job right i will without a shadow of a doubt lose money on this job right next question um it's not a question have you seen the six digit number yet have you have we shown it yet we don't know have we john yeah you're gonna win that sternus aluminium shaft hammer right this will be a six digit number you need to find it in one of these episodes and send me it i'll let you know how you can send me it it's raining now so we're going to drop this video now and we're going to get all this rubbish around the front Right, so the rod's in the middle. We know the concrete's six, seven, five inches in various places, yeah, and it's not less than that. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to drill some holes in there and we're going to chem fix the rods in there because the centre of that is more than sufficient to support that. Um, what I've done, I've just put a bit of tape around there um, at five inches. <laughs> We, 
we've pinged the line down the down the middle there. And, and what I'm doing first, I'm going through with um, a 12 mil masonry bit. Just to pile it first. And then what I'll do then, we have got a 25 mil one. which will take the rod then. But what we need to do as well, it's not, it's not the easiest thing to get this dead straight, um, but it won't matter because when I come to put the rods in, um, when I put the timber on the rods, we can flex it a little bit. But this is what you can do if you've already got an existing concrete base that you want to use a bit of. You know, going back to that last question, um, there's absolutely thousands of people that have watched these videos and occasionally you get somebody who wants to argue with you or tell you something different. Um, and then you get other people that are actually in the trade as well and can actually appreciate what we're doing here. All we are doing, we're trying to do the best job we can, which we always do, um, and give you as much information so you can do it yourself. And literally, you will save yourself on a build this size, £10,000 plus, easily. Right, Jen, we're going to mark that off at five inches, or thereabouts. And I know that, that my rod will go in at that. We'll drill them out, and then what we're going to do then, we're going to stick a little bit of pipe down that hole and blow it out um, and we'll, we'll show you the the um we'll show you the rod going in then as well into the resin and show you how quickly it goes off right i'm now going to show you the width and the depth of the hole and somebody did ask the question earlier on so i'll just show you if jen just comes across Unfortunately, somebody was on about obstructions and stuff like that. Well, if you look at this one, we've got an electric cable which was running directly through this hole. So what I've done is I've dug, found the electrical cable, pulled it out of the way, and it allows me now to obviously dig my hole. At some point, we will remove this cable and cap it off, and we'll run our own 10 mil armoured up here, but that's for another day. So this hole is 600 deep. Probably a touch more than 600 to be fair. No, it's about bang on 600. And we'll just have a little look at the width. I've never really measured the width. It's about 210, 220 mil wide. Um, this is our, one of our rods. You have seen us make them before. We basically, I use a finger and thumb here. I stretch them fully out and then we put this plate so we get about, what would you say, there's about 200 mil there? Yeah. 200 mil of concrete underneath this so that there's no down pressure is going to crack it. Make sure you never put this too low. If you only put it at like 50 mil, there's a chance that you could crack the bottom of your concrete. But again, that's down to how you dig the hole. When you dig the hole, you need to bottom it out firmly at the bottom because you don't want to fill it with concrete and then your concrete sinks in the hole afterwards. So what I've done here is, if Jen just comes a touch closer, I'll just move that way. Um, I've been round with my level and we want the rods on the outside of the line. But every now and then, what happens is when we're digging the holes, they don't get dug slightly out at the bottom and you see can you see that metal washer Jen that metal washer hits the side of the hole when you're trying to plumb it up to the line there so every now and then you've just got to dig the bottom of the hole on a slight angle to allow for the square washer to go it's if this is the square washer at the bottom it hits the hole and then you can't move your rod over enough to your line so if you dig it out on a slight angle you can then your washer will then sit into the angle and you'll get your rod nice and flush to your line so this is the 4B3. As I discussed yesterday, it's hard to get apparently in Scotland, but I did not um, mention four different companies that supply it, that the guys on the group had um, said. Right, it comes at 4.8. We'll talk about the 4B3 more extensively tomorrow, but I just want to put one together quickly for you while John's gone away to get another drill bit and we'll wait for the concrete. 
it comes at 4.8 long that's 4.8 this building is over five meters so we need to join it again the build pack the information's in the build pack um and the information about these splice plates it's a splice plate joining plate it just joins the two timbers together um that'll go on that side that'll go on that side and it will make that timber one piece of timber which will be structurally sound enough so let's say we've got a rod going through there and a rod going through there that'll be suspended in the middle and it's structurally sound um that is a twist nail where's it best to show you is it best to show you there john can you see or oh, maybe the silver ones are a yeah, little bit better can you see the twist on the shaft yeah yeah so that's a twist nail um it is approximately 30 millimeters long now the question was earlier on do the joist hangers and the twist nails not affect the floor so let's say that's a joist hanger and that's your twist nail you've got about a mil or so there but by the time you braid it flat um, and you put your flour over it makes no odds whatsoever so what i'm going to do i'm going to hold that into place there and just get this nailed just get it done quickly i think um before this concrete comes do you put nails in every hole william no do you want to put a mic on Okay, um, do I put nails in every hole? No, you don't, you don't need to. Um, what I tend to do is stagger the holes and make a little pattern. Um, again, the twist nails are in the build pack. The build pack, I'm gonna keep going on about this because it's a value, it is value for money and it's invaluable because it will save you time and money on your own garden room build along in conjunction with these videos. You can see there, look, it's nice if you've got a nice flat area just like we have here using customers drive um, does it matter if the timber's not leather right sometimes it's a bit of a yeah so some sometimes what happens is um this timber should be 4b3 which makes it 100 millimeters by 75 millimeters and so most of the time it isn't at all it does vary that sounds like a concrete wagon to me I'll oh, skip wagging one another. Right, so what will happen is it will be slightly stepped. Oh, as is this one. Right, skip wagons here, so we're just going to pause this a minute just while we get to the really stick. But you can see it's slightly stepped there, look, Jen. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make it flush at the top because this is the top. Yeah. And then I'll get a couple of nails in there just while that one. See, it's flush at the top. It's not flush at the bottom, though. But what I'm going to do is nail that side and then roll it over. He knows where he's dropping that, doesn't he? That's yeah. no problem. Right, we'll carry on. Okay, so sorry, it skips. Skips just arrived, um, which means we've got a lot of work to do this afternoon now, haven't it? But again, just going to nail every other one. And as I said, that will make. Um, we've, we're cutting one in three, so that's four eight and that's one six. So that's oh my maths, Jen. What's that? Four eight and one six. Testing now, innit? Four eight and one six is five eight uh, six four. Six meters far. Is that right? We don't know because maths, <laughs> maths is not our forte. Jen wants four. I'd always be twice her age. <laughs> right, you can see there now. Look, it's put it together. Um, just get a couple more in there. What you might do is hit your finger. And um, my best advice there is to just shout and swear. To get rid of that anger and pain. Right, roll that over. Again, holding that splice plate tight to the bottom of there. Just going to put a couple of nails in there just so it's got it. Um, okay, and just make sure it's up. I'm going to show you a trick with screws, like a countersink screws. Um, you see the hole there, yeah? If you've got a countersink shaft on it, if you put the screw to that side of the hole, when it drives in, the countersink, go the countersink goes to there and drives the wood further over like that. So that's how you would pull a, a piece of timber across with a screw. But I'm going to show you that later on, on another day. Um, so we had good response last night, I think. Lots of questions. Jen was busy beavering away all night, writing them down. Um, so if you've got any more questions, the base will get start constructed tomorrow. Um, so we'll talk about timbers. Um, I know it's a bit boring for some people, yeah? But other people are really enjoying it, so 
this format is going to stay for the duration of this video and we're going to finish this one because i know i haven't finished a lot various things happen in life and we've not been able to finish them but you can see there i've nailed sort of every other one haven't i there yeah have i yeah no sort of, sort of aren't I? it's not a science and i wouldn't lose no sleep if you miss one that one's annoying which one? That one there. Jen watched um, Ghost for the first time the other day. He's never seen it before in her life. And, and then watched Sixth Sense and didn't get the fact Bruce was dead until the very end. Hi, mate. Uh, yes. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. So, Skip, um, I'll just see if I can just put that on there so that's all the information you can see. Yeah, 200 and what is it? What, 95 pounds. 295 pounds um, for a skip, which. It's only small, isn't it? It's an eight yarder. Yeah. yeah. Um, eight yarder on road, so that gets you a permit as well, which gives you two weeks on road. That skip will be full by the end of today, I'd imagine. Um, but we still have a permit for two weeks, so we'll get another skip. So that's again another cost that people don't foresee sometimes. So Dave, you just throw a tape on this and measure this length, see if my maths was right. What did I say, 6'4"? I think so. The full length, please Dave. Oh, can you get that one, Jen? Six four. Okay. Right, David, leave your tape there. Um, sorry, bring it up here. What I meant was just keep your tape out. So that's 6,400 long now. It's got a splice plate on. What we will make sure to do, to, as we did to answer the question earlier on, we will stagger these so at the back we'll have a splice plate. Let me, have you got a sharper there? Do you haven't you? Right, so that's the build like that. Um, these will be the long ones, the 6'4 ones, so I know my bifolds are going there, so we might have a, a stretcher plate there, stretcher plate there, and a stretcher plate there, and stagger them. But if the doors were going on this front there, I would make sure that that stretcher plate doesn't fall under the doors, because you don't want that under there, really. Um, and that's it, and what we'll also make sure to do, and, all, and Jenna's made this mistake, haven't you? Yes. Um, she's put this where the rod is, and I've ended up drilling there. 25 mil hole and of course you're hitting the nails and risk hitting the, the stretch plate as well um, but I've also made that mistake as well right what I want to show you about tape measure somebody asked me about measuring um, and how we measure you know I don't do it to be fair David. let me see if mine does it you should all do it there we go right you tape there look yeah you see that movement in there it's supposed to have that movement what that's designed to do is so if you push your tape like that and measure measure that distance there, that will give you a 400. Or if you hook it on and pull it, it will also give you, you know, 400. That distance there is designed for the thickness of that. Mine's got a little bit of play in it. So what you shouldn't do, um, there's, a, there's a new tape that I see on TikTok a lot. It's got loads of holes in it, it's silver, and they're getting in water, don't they, and all that carry on, and they think it's great, um, and it bends and it collapses and it all goes together. Um, but what they do, they go like this, look. Not like that, there, and pull it back in like that. And that then, right, when you just release it like that and pull it in like that, it makes that bigger so you don't get true measurement. So what you should always do is just slow the tape down with your finger and then let it go in properly like that because once that gets, that's got quite a bit of slack on there. Once it's got too much slack on, you're not getting a true measurement. If you're pulling the tape or if you're butting up and pushing it, it'll be slightly different on both times. Right, that's your 4B3. We will talk about that in more detail tomorrow. There are your twist nails. We'll also talk about them and the cost of them. But then that basically now is, is that'll be the back timber, I guess, or the front timber, it doesn't matter. If Jen looks down there, she'll see it's not straight, is it, Jen? Is it not straight? How straight is it? It's What, about there? A bit there? Yeah. Right, so there's a bend in that, but because we've used the string line with our rods, when we put our timber on our rod, we'll get rid of the bend. Um, not 100%, but enough not to have a problem with it. And then by the time you put your floor on, you'll have a straight wall. So don't worry about it if your timber comes and it's bent and you think, geez, what am I gonna do with that? It's not a problem. Right, we're gonna start loading this skip while we wait for John to come back. 
So as predicted, the scrap man turned up. They seem to be around every day. So he took the garage doorway and all the bits of metal. Air concrete is here now. So you can mix it on your, by yourself in a cement mixer or on a board. Uh, that's the cheapest alternative. This, I'll let you know how much this costs, but I'm sure it's about 250 a cube. We will literally use, <coughs> excuse me, half a cube. So basically what happens, if Jen looks there, there's a load of ballast in one part of the, um, one part of the, the, the wagon and a load of cement in the other part of the wagon and it'll actually mix it as long when it goes along a little conveyor belt and mix it with water to the right consistency John's after um, John likes quite a relatively wet mix because he can move his rods about but we're going to show you that when we go around and see him um, see him putting his rods in so Jen, Jen come here if you have a look in there, look, you can see the ballast on the conveyor belt. Can you see it? Yeah. yeah. So they, they pre-mix it to the mix you want. And the barret as well, so it saves loads of time. Right, so what actually happens then? It goes along that conveyor belt. This guy will... He, he mixes the water there, the ratio to it. Um, and he'll move along that conveyor belt then. It'll mix the water and cement, the ballast. And it'll come out there at the end. Genius, really. There, look, there's the sand and the stones and the cement and the water, all mixes up, goes up the corkscrew and comes out as your concrete, which I'd say that mix is bang on for him, to be fair. Right, let's go see John and see what's going on then. Oh, that's well dry. I know, it's... it's... Right, so, basically... Look, John, be, be, be. It's too dry, is that? Look, you can see it's not slopping that at all. Right, John, go for it. So basically, with it being dry, I've now got to get the bottom exactly in the right place because when it's full, you can't move the rod at all. You can move the top, but you can't move the bottom. This is why I like it wet. But anyway, I'll, I'll get it right before Liam fills it. It loves too the wet quick. Hole, don't you, John? I'm not on string line, am I, Jen? Uh, you sat on it, mate? No, I said I won't. I didn't feel like I was. Yeah, I'm in ball pack. <sighs> Yeah, so if you look at the level now, look, as long as the bottom of the rod doesn't move, the top can go like that, but the bottom can't move. And because it's dry, the bottom won't move. But this is why I like it wet so that I can move the bottom. Left and right, I'll do in a minute that way. Right, that'll do that. Yeah, so, we pour it in there for me. Let me try. So did you see did you see it level then, yeah? Yeah. I'll now do my left and right. right I'll do it, I'll do it. We'll do it that way. Push it to the line. And that's that one done. Right, it's done there, David. So how far off the line are you putting it on? Well, it, it's just with like an half a pence or so something like that. There. Yeah, go on, Griffin. Let me just check I'm not on the line. You've got to check that you're not on the line as well because you're always sat over it. Pour it in there, David. In John's. No, that one. I'm trying to, if you have a look, Jen, I'm trying to move the bottom. See how the bottom of the rods can go there? I'm trying to nudge it in the right place so that when I move the rod to the string line half a mil away that um, don't worry about that Liam half a mil away that it's going to be level so that's what I'm doing I'm up yeah, in the bottom yeah but you stay with this barrier here mate so it's miles away at the minute yeah John is that better look yeah go on go now uh, yeah that's looking better for now yeah yeah the volume might be slightly increased if there's more water in it, but not a lot. Not a lot. So you won't ever use like a cube? No, I never. No, no, it just makes it a bit easier and harder to get the rods level. If the mix is too thick, you've got to get the bottom in the right place immediately there, within right? four to six inch of concrete. If it's thinner, Watch you trip over that stuff there. like this now, I'm struggling to move the bottom because the mix is too thick. But hopefully I'll be able to do it, but 
There what you go. want, you want the washer completely in case, so you've got to make sure there's concrete underneath the washer as well as above it and around it. So by doing that, you can it's, get it's in case it completely, yeah. yeah. Any air pockets. To go. Why is it important to get them close to the line as you can? Yeah, because the line is the line keeps them all in line with each other, and that's what you want to do. The the line is creating the straight line for when you put your base on. Where's your child gone, John? I've left it behind mine. More. Yeah, you can fill it. Yeah. So I get why it's close to the line. Why do we have to get it so plumb? We, you don't, you could have it slightly off, but if you imagine all looking at your four fingers in a line, if one's slightly to one side, one's slightly to the other, then when you drill the holes in the timber, the timber won't go on, you've got to start whacking it down, which in all fairness does work. If you get them plugged, you can drill your holes square as well in your timber, which Liam will show you. You can more or less drop it on and it'll just drop down lovely into position. Right. right, I'm good, Liam. See, with the mix wet now, I've got the bottom right in five seconds less instead of messing around for yeah, ages. You're, you're backing off further and further every time I'm walking out of the length of patio. <laughs> That. I do usually have it a bit wet, but it seems all right. Yeah, well, I, I either left and right, but sometimes it's way off. But if you watch when I come round front, then I just went like that. And it isn't, to be fair, if it was half a mil one way or the other, it's not, you know, as long as it's near enough, it'll be good for your timber to go over the top. This is. Yeah, go on. Oh, no. Oh, how are we going to go that way? Have you we'll jumped it next? Always double checking your line when you're done because somebody can accidentally knock a rod and you won't see it. So you do need to double check it every now and then. Watch your eyes, John. That's the reason why I wear these glasses as well. If you didn't, you wouldn't be a sick line. Well, there's that, but it also stops the uh, thing going in my eyes. There's dual purpose glasses. Mm. <gasps> That's not bad at all, puppy. Do no, I'm good, I'm good. You stand that. No, we used to mix it by um, a cement mixer. Um, and as we said yesterday, we used to make shuttering and make piles. Uh, is that enough for you, John? Yeah, it's enough there now, Liam. Um, that's touching that line on that side. Let's do that side over there. 
Good pour that lot in there, David. Yeah, it's a big one. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, go on. Yeah, go on. That's it, mate. Lovely. Right, I'll leave that to you, John. Thank you. So as long as he gets his rod relatively close to that line, then all the rods will be in a straight line. So when we use our square tomorrow to mark the centre of the timber, all the rods will be in the centre of the timber in the line. To be fair, a string line is an essential bit of kit, isn't it, John? Yeah, you won't believe how yeah, Can you see down that, Jen? Yeah. And what we'll do as well, once we've got these in and these guys have gone, we'll get the hose pipe and we'll clear off the bottom of the rod because these nuts will get wound down pretty far because we want this base just to glide over the top of this. John, can I just push it to that side, please? We want this base to glide Ooh. over the top of the, the existing concrete pad. Where's the towel? This is that little one, David, please. It one actually there. brought two, two of each, didn't it? This makes his loads better. Okay. Yeah. Now you coming in? Um. Yeah, I'll shovel it in, John. Will oh, this concrete affect anything to do with the rod system and shoes on? No, no. We will just we'll elevate it. Um, highest point lands over in that corner over there. So that's where we'll wind the two nuts down. And this garage base has done being properly so it's ramped that way which was the exit door on the garage so that will be the highest point of concrete anyway so as long as our nuts are down there we'll glide over that we'll probably be sat over this maybe looking at that 25 mil let's say an inch maybe um but we'll see when it's done but that is the highest point of land looking at it but we'll get the laser out tomorrow and we'll have a look Right, what we're going to do now is go around with the horse pipe um, and just make sure there's no cement on the threads because that'll be a bugger to get off in the morning we want these nuts to wind down nice and easy for us. So a few people have suggested why don't we wrap it in tape? Why don't we put a bit of waste pipe on it? Um, various other things, but the truth of the matter is the hose pipe is out. It takes two minutes, it cleans it off and it's as good as anything else. We just want to get all that cement off, especially on these ones over here, because then nuts will be wound down completely, I'd imagine. Um, just so that you so that you could keep them clean, but I, I think what it is sometimes people are just trying to be helpful, Jen. But um, yeah. because we've done it so many times, we've obviously come to a solution where it's really good for us. Right, what I'm going to do now is just get this con concrete there just a little bit lower, because um, I know they'll be wound down properly there, all the way. With that being the highest point. And that is them all, I believe. Is that them all, John? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm just going to get rid of that there. I'll show what else I'm going to do in all in a minute. Are you good, John? We've got to do this all now. We started here, didn't we? Yeah. I've done all of it. So this is just a double set, just to make sure that nobody's kicked them back. And what I'm going to do now as well is, because this ground here, we're going to have to um, make sure this is nice when we've built this. So I'm just going to wash that cement out of there so that there's only like bits of sand and gravel left. And then what we will do then, we'll throw, um, I'd imagine we'll throw some more uh, slate down on there to tidy up that once we've finished. Just get rid of any lumps of cement that are there. Never going to obviously clean it up because it's in with slate. Um, so, if you're asking a question, it would also be helpful and save Jen some time if you just have a quick look through other questions and just make sure that the question you're asking hasn't already been asked. That would be helpful, wouldn't it, Jen? Yeah, because I know that some questions are re repeated a few times. Um, have we got some over there as well? Just there, look, you see, look, his patio there. We don't want concrete stain on that in the morning. We've concreted obviously them in and we're gonna we're gonna pin the middle off the um, 
off the middle of the pad so we know it's well thick. Um, so what I've done, I've drilled down with a 30 mil bit, bit of hose pipe. Give it a clean out. Um, I think I haven't done this one, I can't remember. A longer bit of horse pipe might have been more beneficial. Yeah. Okay, right, and what we're going to do then is use this chemical fixing. Basically, there's two parts to it. I don't know if this tube's any good because I've used this ages ago. And it's got a nozzle which mixes it very much like the cement mixing machine you can see inside there. There's like a spiral and it mixes the two chemicals together. Now, like I said, I don't know if this one will work. If not, we'll have to opt for the other one. I didn't know you could get it in a normal mastic gun fitting, but it turns out you can. There, you can see it. Can you see it? The two colours look sort of grey and cream colour, yeah? So what I'm going to do... <coughs> I'm going to pump a load of that into there. for that one. I'll put this rod in and John's going to go mad because I'm not going to use a level. Plug that in there like that. It goes off really rapid. Um, you see that bit there? Don't stand on that bit. And we'll see if we can remember to have a look at that in a minute. But you can see it mixing in the nozzle, can't you? Yeah. Uh, can you see it's two different colours? Look? It's gone, gone like a, a grey colour, hasn't it? What actually is it? There? Just two chemicals that were mixed together. Or really hard. I don't know, Jen, that's, a, that's as technical as I can get with it, really. Um, but it does, it goes rock hard. I actually made a gazebo in my own garden using this, um, drill through the flags and put some rods in and a square plate washer on and put the 4 before post on top of that and that worked a treat. So that's the Fisher product, that's the one I originally bought. Um, that's now run out. Don't know if you supposed to put your finger in that. Um, and now we'll try this other one which I've not used ever before. Like I said, I didn't know you could get the mastic gun. Um, it's designed so that this actually came with two nozzles, I've used the other nozzle on there, but it's designed so that you can, um, when you're finished... Ah, did it sound about bursting the bag, John? Um, it's got a little bag inside it, look, can you see it? Yeah, right, we're going to have to read the instructions and see what that says, because I'm sure you're going to have to burst that bag. <laughs> right, so what the idea was behind that was put the cap on, squeeze the trigger, it pops it, and then out, took the, the cap back off, and out the end came um, a little metal cover, and the end of the bag obviously burst. Ooh, that's a lot harder to push, is that one? All right, that's why I paid £30 for that other gun, and this Cox gun is about to break. That is a lot. Um, yeah, I just didn't want it to all pump out and then have to clean up, do you know what I mean? I just literally want it to support that rod. Um, but that's a bugger to push, is that? Can you see it in the hole? I'd imagine that's plenty. Yeah. yeah. Um, what we'll do as well, not that we're going to get any water under here, but what we're going to do is just seal the top of that joint if we can. Just to stop any water ingress into that all. Does it sound like it takes to go off at all? Uh, 
Uh, I know when we did that other one. Are you still filming? Yeah. I know when we did that other one, it went off before we got to the end of the line. Um, it, it was, John, was it? Yeah, it was. We'll just put a blob there, and you should be able to. Yeah. That, that's still wet. That was the first blob that Yeah. Done. Right, we'll put that there and see what it's like when we go. Right, that's for a bin now. Uh, it's about eight quid, I think it was. Right, so that's all the rods in. Again, they came from Baps. I'm going to go to Baps now and get some shoes. Might do a little video there as well. Are we off, yeah? Right, your rod system. This is where you need to go. Baps. I don't know why I call it Baps. It's Bap. Bap bolts. It's in Leeds. There's one in Castleford and there's one somewhere else as well, but I can't remember. Um, there's the number. Order 132. 439. 600. They sell the full kit. And here you go. There's the shoes. Um, we have got enough rods in the container, so we're just getting shoes today. But this is where you get them from. Um, but if not, we'll just talk through this. We've got the rods going around the perimeter. You can see there, John's got them all next to the line. They're washed off. Yeah, next to the line. They're all washed off and ready to go down tomorrow. And we've chem res these down here as well. And there's the bit of chem res that I put on the floor as a little test of look. It's gone hard now. Um, probably still setting a little bit, but it's hard. Um, there, look, that's absolutely solid in there. So, your ground, your hole, yeah, that's approximately 600 deep and that's approximately 200 wide. Your threaded bar then sits in there like that. You've got your 100ml square plate washer with your nut and your nut. That's your threaded bar. And then filled with concrete and jabbed down. And what happens then, so John jabbed it up and down, you see him do that, there's concrete gone under that washer and above it and around it, so they can't drive through. So the weight of the building ain't gonna push that rod through that pile. Um, and it works, doesn't it, John? Yeah, it's not let us down since. So that's it. I don't know, John, will you pass me that hammer, please? Um, I don't know if anyone has seen the six digit number yet. If this is the first time you've watched this, um, I will be giving away this Sternus hammer. Um, absolutely free somewhere in this series of videos there will be a six digit number and then oops and then i will ask you to send me that and you'll get that hammer it's about 130 pounds that hammer it's a beautiful little hammer as well excellent hammer um so that's the sternus hammer don't forget go in the description there's various links a build pack link there's a link for the yorkshire choice awards we've been nominated the most charitable business if you could click on that that would be fantastic and if you've enjoyed this and you've watched it for free which you certainly have and you're going to get more information out of it as well buy a raffle ticket it costs two pounds some money going to candle lighters and you're in the chance to win a pod or a garden room so i'm going to go to baps now if i have done a little video i'll drop it in if not please like and subscribe and we'll see you tomorrow stand that upright john